Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Town Square Media and 1061 Kiss FM proudly bring to you your podcast champions of the world. Woo. He's the R to the O to the B. I'm S-T-E-V-E. We are your hosts with the most, bringing you everything wrestling related from post to post. Gets me charged up every time we hear it. Okay, Steve, so uh, there's another thing that we've been meaning to cover here for quite a few weeks, but there's just not enough time yes. uh, in the day sometimes, it feels like. So uh, while I've been recovering from back surgery, which I'm still on the men from, but getting better a little bit every day, uh, they've been dribbling out new information on the 2016 Hall of Fame. Yes. Um, we know of four entries so far, the latest one in this past Monday being the Big Boss Man. Do you want to start at the top, should we, should we, or should we start kind of at the bottom? Where do you want to go here? Um, let's we'll start at the bottom. Let's build our way up. Okay. So the most recent inductee, posthumously, the Big Boss Man. And I know from talking to you uh, off camera, uh, we have differing opinions about the Boss Man's induction. I'll let you okay. get things started. Um, maybe one day Boss Man should be in the Hall of Fame. I just don't think it's now. All right. Well, he can't add much to his career because he's, he's past us now. Yeah. Um, I disagree. I think he's a good choice for a few reasons. Number one, um, well, everyone reads the rumors about who's part of the class and who's not this year and stuff mm. like that. Bossman was a genuine surprise. But I do feel like there, were, there was a crop of guys from like that rock and wrestling era that people really remember. You know, if you, let's say you talk to a fan who stopped watching wrestling in, like, the early 90s. Okay. Uh, they remember guys like the Ultimate Warrior, yes. uh, the Savages, the Hogans, the, the Million Dollar Man. You know, anyone who was, like, a wrestling buddy, I feel like, gets really remembered because they were cartoons. They were yeah. living cartoons. They were animated. They were colorful, and they were memorable. And I feel like Boss Man is in that crop of guys okay. who people loved. Um, and even though I wasn't the biggest of uh, big Boss Man fans... Um, I feel like he's a good fit, and I, I really think he's a great induction, personally. Okay. Um, so that's the way I feel about it. I know you, you disagree, and that's cool. That's what this is about. And, and what else do you think keeps him out of the Hall of Fame, at least right now? Um, when I think of a Hall of Fame, I kind of think of accolades. And, yeah, I remember Big Boss Man, and, I mean, he did this and did that. He was never, like, a prominent champion. I don't remember him being, like, the number one hill for any long stretch. Um... He was for a time. When he feuded with Hogan, he was the biggest heel. Yeah, um, I mean, but just the, the thing that stands out to me most about Boss Man is when he had the snot beat out of him by nails. <laughs> okay. I mean, and whose nails? Well, let me also put it to you like this. Okay. Um, every Hall of Fame class has a main event. Yes. It has a woman. Yes. It has a celebrity. Yes. And it has a lower level, and yes. usually a tag team, too. There's a, kind of like a formula to it. And if you put him in as, like, the not main event star, I feel like he's he's very fitting, personally. Yeah. So, that's the boss man. Welcome to the 2016 Hall of Fame. Uh, the second most recently announced one was the Freebirds. Yes. And we may disagree on this one, too. Um, back when I was hosting the show with Eric, this was a disagreement we would have frequently. Okay. Eric's a southern guy. Um, and I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, he got the Freebirds when I didn't. Now, I'll admit, I, they're a little, they predate me a bit. Mm -hmm. Their heyday was not only before I was a fan, but before I was walking. Yeah. Um, they were in territories I wasn't following. And um, I feel like their legacy, and I know a lot of people will be cursing the screen when they watch <laughs> this, is overrated. Um, their biggest hype man and their, their, their biggest um, fan for lack of a better term, is Michael Hayes. Yes. Michael never shuts up about them. Uh, they, if you would just listen to Michael Hayes, you would think they were the this, the gods of, of wrestling, yeah. which missed me. Go ahead and lambast me now, because I'm assuming you disagree. Um, I, I disagree. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lambast you. They are they are the new day of the 1980s. They have done so much for tag teams that maybe you don't even realize. Um, I mean, they were, you know, the first six-man tag team, you know, the Freebird rule. Uh, I mean, they were around before a lot of, a lot of my fandom, most of my fandom, they were before, you know, the Furriers, a lot of the people watching now, but what they contributed to then that is still 
felt today that we don't even know. I think they deserve to be in for that. Maybe There are definitely teams that need to go in before them, in my opinion, but they are ones that need to be there. Just never got them. I never liked the Confederate flag. Um, yeah. I've always resented that. I am a northern guy. I'm from Philadelphia. Um, I, they, they're they one of like three entities that claim bringing music into wrestling, which is probably a load of BS, but I mean, you've heard Michael Hayes claim that. Uh, in Lawler's book, he claims to be the first wrestler to use theme music, and also Hulk Hogan has the same claim as well. Um, so I don't know who the first person to introduce music was, but I also want to say this. They were a huge part, uh, and their name seems to go synonymous with the Von Erics. Yes. The Von Erics are an entity that I feel, um, how do I want to word this? They were also a little bit uh, overrated. They were never as good, in my opinion, as they got credit for being, and they always booked themselves to win. Yep. Uh, I resent that. Uh, so world-class championship wrestling to me, while I respect some of their angles and what they contributed to the territories and the wrestling business, uh, was always selfish and to get themselves over. Yeah. So a lot of what came from WCCW uh, just has a bad taste in my mouth personally. Okay. So, uh, and I know I'll probably get heat for this one. That's fine. But that's what I think about the Freebirds. Just uh, couldn't afford to pay taxes on what they think they're worth personally. Yeah. So, right. But uh, to me, to me, Michael Hayes is still Doc Hendricks. Well, let me sell you these <laughs> shitty sunglasses for four ninety. You know, like that's that's what yeah. Michael Hayes is to me. So. Um, Who's next? After that, uh, The Godfather yes. was announced. Okay, I'm dying to get your thoughts on <laughs> uh, on The Godfather. Um, one thing Godfather does is make Big Boss Man more worthy to go in. All right, uh, I'm all ears. I'm um, not sure I agree. Um, the Godfather, although he had a long wrestling career, it was as at least three different characters. Mm -hmm. And The Godfather never got above mid-card status right. as the Godfather. Um, if you want to put him in, you know, put him in as him, his normal self. Don't make him the Godfather. I mean, he's Kama. He's Papa Shango. I liked him better as Papa Shango. Yeah, a lot of people did. Um, I think he's probably best remembered as being the Godfather. Of course. Um, but I actually was talking with a friend about this. I'm one of the, like, the probably seven people on the planet who f most fondly remember him as Kama. Uh, okay. I started watching wrestling in 1994. Uh, Kama debuted not long thereafter, and uh, he was a supreme fighting machine you know, <laughs> to me. The Godfather had his ups and his downs. The Godfather was a staple of the Attitude Era. But when you actually sat down and watched him, his shtick was the same thing week in, and week out. It was the same lines, roll up a fatty for this pimp daddy, you know, uh, come aboard the whole train. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the same shtick every single time. The Godfather really did not have any memorable feuds or matches during that run, but he was a colorful, um, definitive figure in the Attitude Era. Yeah. I give him a, a C or a C- minus as an induction, yeah. personally. Um, I'm not offended by him going in, and I have a lot of, you know, uh, I can say, I've seen a lot of his career, and uh, he's been around for so long that just, you know, the man should go in, you yeah, know, so I is. agree. If you duck him as all those personalities, it might be better than Justin ducking him yeah. as the godfather. And then there is the main event one that we, we, we talked about, um, and the big name wrapping up the show this year, I assume, he'll be the last inductee yeah. of the night, uh, is the man called Sting. Yes. Okay. Um... I have mixed opinions about this. Okay. Sting is absolutely a Hall of Fame worthy entrant. Not only that, he's worthy to be the final inductee as far as like, you know, he's he's worthy of being the biggest name in a given class. Yes. I feel like it's too soon because I feel like he's still in some ways active in WWE. Like I don't think he's had his last match. Okay. And um, I kinda wanna miss him before he gets inducted. Uh, what do you think? Um, he definitely he definitely belongs there. Um, his short run in WWE, I mean, really didn't have anything to do with his career other than to finally say that he made it to WWE. But I mean, he's one of the top five names in wrestling. You think top five? I would I would think so. I mean, he's definitely up there with the Hogan and the Flair and Andre he's, the Giant. He's up there, but I wouldn't say I would say top five WCW. Uh, oh, yeah, def top two WCW, yeah. But I wouldn't say top five. I mean, when you when you look at the wrestling business as a whole, 
you've got Hogan, Austin, Rock, yeah. you've got Triple H. Um, I mean, there's four, but definitely there's bigger names than Sting, in my opinion. Sure. I've been honest about this. I was never a, a little stinger. Um, I was usually team WWF, WWE. Yeah. WCW was my second choice. Yes. Uh, but there was, like, during that, that 80-some weeks that they were beating Raw, I was typically watching Nitro when it was the better show. Uh, but Sting, um, I never really clung to, but when I look back on his career now and watch the DVDs and watch his matches back, they're fantastic, yeah. and, I, and I get him, and I get that he was the WCW's Hulk Hogan and the WCW's Ultimate Warrior. Uh, I don't have a problem with him being in the Hall of Fame. I just wish they'd wait a few years. Yeah, I do agree with you there. They need to have some kind of a time limit. I know other major sports, you have to wait so many years before you're eligible. I think the only reason pro wrestling doesn't wait is because their fan base's memory is so short term. Mm -hmm. It's like, get them in there now while they're hot. I, I understand that for sure. Uh, another thing I, I always say this about the Hall of Fame, and I want to say it again, if you stopped it right now, that'd be a decent-sized class, I feel like, especially when you figure four Freebirds are going in. They always make the classes too big, in my opinion, and uh, I don't think we're done. I believe that we'll be able to report in the future about the uh, additional names being added to yeah. the Hall of Fame. We've heard rumors, but we won't address them until they're actually yeah. announced. So... Um, there you go. Our thoughts on the Hall of Fame. Unless you have anything to add, Steve. Uh, I think we've covered it. And for myself and my tag team partner, Steve, the birthday boy. <laughs> I'm afraid I've got some bad news.